It's been a really tough year on the investment front. Both funds are down for the year and in the Australian fund where we're down a fairly significant amount despite carrying lots of cash through the year. Uh, it's been a much better year on the business side of things. We, we employed a few new people over the past 18 months and we've had a pretty good year in terms of integrating those people into the business and starting to get results out of them. In both funds we've had one big disaster. In the Australian fund uh, that was Freedom Insurance where we've lost almost all of the value of those shares over the past year and that was quite clearly a mistake. In the international fund, we had a significant investment in Technicolor and its share price is down about two thirds over the year. And similarly, we've made an investment mistake there. So both of those uh, share prices are down a long way because the business has performed very poorly. Across the rest of both portfolios, we haven't really had that much bad news. So there's been a lot of share price retractions that are 20 and 30 and in some cases 40% where the businesses haven't actually been performing that badly. That's the sort of volatility that we really welcome. It's allowed us to put more money to work over the course of the year, and it's allowed us to add a few more uh, new investments to both portfolios too. Isolex actually been the best performer for us. It was a new investment in the fund this year that we didn't uh, buy until April and May on the back of a pretty significant profit downgrade from that business. It's actually been a pretty stable, reliable business at the revenue line for most of the past five years, but the costs go up and down and they run some pretty expensive advertising campaigns that sometimes don't work. So the profit line has been very, very volatile. We got pretty confident that there is a sustainable business there and when the share price fell to 40 cents or so earlier this year, uh, we'd done all of the work and, and we were ready to dive in and that has actually been the best performer in a short period of time in the Australian fund. Over on the global fund, and this has been why that fund has actually performed a bit better, we had a, a few more wins, and in particular, we've got a, a UK technology stock called Blanco in that portfolio that's performed very well over the year. Uh, it's been a, a turnaround, there's a new management team in there, and it's showing some very promising signs of being a successful turnaround. In the international portfolio, we're getting really close to fully invested there. We've added a little bit to some of the, the investments that we already had. We've found a number of new ideas to add into the portfolio. So we're feeling really optimistic about that, how that portfolio is positioned. Like I said, when you've got these, these stocks where the share price is down a long way, but where you think the investment case is, is still intact, that sets you up really well for, for future performance. We're still finding the Australian market quite difficult. We've added a few new stocks to the portfolio there. Particularly recently, we've got uh, a few smaller positions in things that we want to be bigger positions, but the market is still really difficult here. I think you've got three broad groups of, of stocks. You've got the businesses that are really uh, structurally challenged. You know, companies like Retail Food Group and AMP, the share price is down a long way, but there are serious question marks over the business. You've got cyclical businesses like the banks and property developers that are trading at very low multiples of historical earnings and quite high dividend yields, but where the future profits are quite clearly going to be lower than the historical profits. And my experience has been in those cyclical companies, you are much better off paying a high multiple of depressed earnings than you are paying low multiples of high earnings because the earnings can evaporate very quickly. And then you've got a third bucket of what I'd call the, the expensive defensives. So the businesses that are not facing either of those problems, but where you're pretty confident that they're going to at least maintain their profitability, maybe keep growing, you know, throw businesses like Amcor, CSL, Cochlear into that, that bucket, but they're all quite expensive. So you've got a choice of paying expensive prices for certainty or taking a lot of uncertainty. Uh, just this past few weeks, I'd say we've started seeing some the phone ringing with some larger lines of better quality businesses. So fingers crossed we start to see the volatility spread to some undeserved places rather than the deserved ones. We've been looking for another senior analyst on the International Fund for most of the past year and I'm very pleased to say we've We've finally been able to find the right person for that role, so you'll meet him and we'll introduce him to everyone in early February when he starts working for us. So that's going to be a big part of next year is, is bringing him on board and getting him up to, to speed with everything. 
Look, my father was a, a very good rugby league coach and he used to say to our, our football teams at the start of every year, we're not going to worry about winning the comp, we're going to worry about each individual getting better as, as a footballer and if we all get better then we're going to win lots of games. And I feel a little bit the same in the investment world. I, I don't really have any idea what's going to happen next year, I don't know what markets are going to do. I know that we've made a lot of progress as a team over the past year and I think if we can keep doing that, we can keep getting better as investors every year, then eventually that will translate into results. So biggest uh, job for the team and for me as well is to make sure that we keep improving.